Hello Internet, I hope you're having a good day. My name is Waffle and I'm a maker at Discovery Place and today we're going to be talking about 3D modeling. So before we talked about modeling in Tinkercad where you can draw and modify blocks, here we're going to be using programming. So you're going to be able to set a series of actions and conditions that you will get to watch play out to build your thing. So let's see how it works. All right, so now that we have a window of what we're looking at, this is Tinkercad code blocks. So as opposed to dragging and dropping things manually and stretching them, we actually can use objects. So if I put down a box and I hit play, a box appears. If I want to put down a cylinder, I hit play, a box appears, then a cylinder appears. And what you can actually see is you can also, in addition to placing objects, you can modify things. So I could move this to the side a little bit. This cylinder, I could scale and make bigger. So now when I hit play, you see I place a block and move it and then scale it, right? Now the order I do these things in changes which order it's in. And if you put different things on different blocks, you end up doing something different. So as opposed to each action being done by me on this, uh, you end up placing a bit of blocks. So the thing with programming is any, we're placing objects in a series. So programming is taking a act, series of actions or steps to get your end result. And so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be designing a cat. To start off, to when I'm making my cat, I'm going to want to start with the sphere as my body. Okay, so we're going to kind of look at the sphere, and it's right there. And I'm going to decide that I want to stretch my sphere a little bit. So I'm going to stretch it on the ends to make it a little bit longer. Let's say we're going to make it twice as stretched. And then I'm going to rotate it a little bit too. So that it's kind of angled. Because I'm imagining my cat kind of sitting on its hind legs, kind of up with its paws and legs out in front of it. Okay. So now these are our axes, right? Here you actually have your X and your Y and your Z. So we're going to rotate it about the Y axis. And I'm going to say about 30 degrees. So we're going to hit play. Boom. There we go. We can see how it's rotated that way, All right? Now that we've done this, uh, it's not, it's a little bit low, so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it up a little bit. All right, ta-da, it's now in the air, All right? And so we're actually gonna say that this is a new object. I'm gonna rename this object body, so we know what it is. We're going to create a new object. We're going to in this leg. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I want to make another, take another sphere, and we're going to stretch it the same, similar way we did before. Right? We get a little cylinder. I'm going to scale this one. I don't want this one to be quite as big as this one. So what I'm going to do is maybe shrink it a little bit. Okay, so that's there, and here we can make these speed up faster. Next, I probably want to move it up into the side, right? So let's move it back. Let's say that's negative 10. We're going to move it to the side 10. All right, and we probably want to lift it up 10 as well. Let's see how this goes. All right, look, so it's a little bit up. Oh, see, it's coming actually coming out front there. That isn't what I want. So I should make that negative 10. Okay. Mm, do we like that? That's a little far out. All right, so maybe, maybe negative 7. Okay, there we go. Looks pretty good. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a little paw print. And I'll open the paw print and see how big that is. Oof, that is very big. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to scale this. Okay, and because this scaling is happening here, I'm just going to change it to 0.5. So this makes everything half as big in every direction. Okay. All right, that looks a little decent paw size. And now we're going to want to put it there, right? So I'm going to say, hey, maybe I move that 
about 10 units here. So I think we're going to now move this. So this is the y-axis. We're going to move this negative 10. All right, this point may be halfway, so maybe that's negative 5. And then I don't know how short that is. Yeah, let's try moving it up to. Almost got it. Let's make that 2.5. Play. And there we go. Right? So that looks pretty good for one foot. So what we can do here is, because this is a new object, I can add a copy of an object. So this copy of the object, right, is going to be a leg. Oop, so we're going to make another one of these. And I'm going to want to move that to the other side. So if the leg, its copy is going to show up here. I'm going to want to move it over and move it over again. Okay, so that, this leg was moved over to Y10, so we'll move it over 20. Play, 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 play. Oof. There we go. We look. And that's pretty good. All right. I'm kind of happy. That's what I like. So, so far, we can see that we have the body. We kind of make the sphere. We stretch out a sphere and then we make tiny little feet. Okay. Well, next, we name a variable. We can say this is front leg. Okay. Front leg. Well, okay, I, I, I kind of liked what we were doing before, right? Using those little um, spheres to make the front leg. So let's do that some more. All right, I'm going to put down a front leg. Oops. Okay, well, I'm just going to scale it again. So that one was a half. I wanted a little bit thinner, so I'm going to say it's 0.3. 0.3, and then maybe it's got to be a little bit bigger, right? Possibly, so I'm going to say 15. Whoa. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, that is the wrong scale. I meant 1.5. Play again. Whew. See that? All right. Now we're going to want to move this, right? Where are we going to want to move it to? Um, probably want to move it out front 10, back to the side a little bit, 10, mm, negative 10, whoops, negative 10, and 15. Play. Okay, it's a little bit far out. Make that negative 7. There you go. So one of the things to remember whenever we're programming and designing these things is that programming is you try to build it one way, you see how it works, and then you go back and you modify. And so it's an iterative process. So what you see me doing here is I do one or two things at a time, and then I hit play. And then I do one or two things, and then hit play. And I see how each step evolves. I don't put down 10 or 15 things at once. I kind of slowly and gradually work my way through it. Now that we've learned the basics of coding with Tinkercad, I'm going to speed up the rest of the process so we can look at the final product. Ta-da! That's your animation. Pretty cool, huh? And then you just name it. This is Waffles Cat. So that's how you use Tinkercad code blocks. So the things to remember is that in programming, we're following a definite set of actions and that things flow in some order and so you deal with one thing at a time and you kind of move things down and then programming is iterative right we take one or two steps and we see how it looks and then we slowly keep tacking things on you can maybe do one or two steps at a time and then see how it works before we continue well i'd like to thank everybody for watching learning how to design something with code in tinkercad as opposed to just drawing stuff you can see we have made my cat which i'm very happy with uh, if you would like to look at any other examples, there's plenty of things to look at. They have a penguin, a moving clock, they have example brackets, and we'd love for you to share whatever you make. Just take the Tinkercad link and share it with us below. 
If there's anything else you'd like to see 3D printed related, please leave a comment below and hopefully we'll have a later video on the topic. As always, my name is Wattle. Thank you for watching and stay safe, y'all.